we're going to be reading a story today that has to do with fractions. So this is called Fraction Action by Lorraine Leedy, and it is published by Scholastic Incorporated. Here we go. Fraction Action. One morning, Miss Prime turned off all the lights in the classroom. Okay, everybody, watch the screen and you'll see how to draw a fraction. Start with a whole shape, then make in, it into two equal parts. Each part is called one half. Now let's think of some fractions in real life. Use your imagination to make a picture in your mind of what I say. A tuna sandwich cut in half, half a glass of juice, a bowl of ice cream that is half vanilla and half chocolate. I'm getting hungry. It's time for you to tell me about halves. What can you imagine, Otto? I'm thinking of a warm muffin cut in half. Good. Next, we will hear ideas from Tally, Ginger, and Faye. My piggy bank is half full. Half my garden has flowers and the other half has vegetables. Maybe the cow jumped over half a moon. Terrific! Now let's look at another fraction. One third. Here is the whole shape. I'll make three equal parts. Each part is called one third. These are some other shapes made into thirds. Who can imagine some thirds? What about you, Sadie? A beach towel with three big stripes. Fantastic! Anyone else? Hmm, I'm imagining a cookie broken into three pieces. A flower with three petals. My wallet has three sections. A jester's hat. Great, I have one more fraction today. One fourth. Start with the whole shape. Make four equal parts. Each part is called one fourth. These are more shapes made into fourths. Now let's imagine some fourths. A hot dog cut into four pieces. A dollar bill folded into fourths. A cracker with four sections. A four leaf clover. A pie cut into four slices. Those are excellent ideas. We're out of time for now, but here is one more question. Which fraction is the smallest? One half? One third or one fourth. Put on your thinking caps. Answer time. The smallest fraction is one fourth. A few days later, Miss Prime turned out the lights again. Today we will learn how to make whole sets into fractions. Please look at the screen. We are a set of two rectangles. I am half of the other set. I am the other half. We are a set of three triangles. I am a third of the set. We are a set of four squares. I am a fourth of the set. We are a set of five circles. And I am a fifth of the set. Now, class, here is a set of marbles. I'll give them to you for, for keeps if you can figure out how to divide them equally. We'd better get started. Since there are five of us, let's try to divide the set of marbles into fifths. Maybe we could group them by color. Sadie gets the blue, Faye gets yellow, I get red, Otto gets purple, and Tally gets green. But wait, the piles have to be equal. Let me try a different way. I'll give everybody a handful. But the piles are not equal. I know what to do. I'll count them out like this. One marble for Ginger, one for Sadie, one for me, one for Otto, one for Faye. Keep going until all the marbles are gone. Does everyone have the same number of marbles? I have six marbles. I have six marbles too. Me too. Me too. Me too. That means we each have exactly one fifth. Congratulations, you found a way to divide the marbles equally, so you get to keep them. Time for recess. So 
So how many marbles were in the whole set? If the five students each got six marbles, how many marbles were in the whole set? Thinking caps? Hmm. Answer time. There were 30 marbles in the whole set. Next section. A fair share. One Saturday, at about noon, Sadie heard a loud knock at the door. Oh, hello, Sadie. Is this a good time for us to drop in? Well, I was just fixing lunch. Wonderful, we'll help. Let's start with a whole apple for everyone. Let's also have oranges. Oops, I can only find two. Not enough for all four of us. You can cut them in half. Good, that will give us four halves. So right now everyone has a full apple and half an orange. What about this watermelon? You can cut it into fourths. Everyone will get an equal share. Let's eat. Hi, Sadie. I hope this is a good time to visit. Well, we only have enough to feed four of us. What should we do? Uh, just give me that fruit. I'll be right back. Well, hi, Miss Bovine. Chop, 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 chop. Fruit salad for everyone. Oh, no, thank you. I'm not hungry. Thank you. What fractions were used to make lunch? Well, there's a fraction of the watermelon, a fraction of the apples, and a fraction of the oranges. Thinking caps on. Answer time. The fractions used to make lunch were one half to slice the oranges, one fourth to cut the watermelon, and one fifth to divide the fruit salad. Lemonade for sale. Step right up for the best lemonade in town. One dollar. Um, Tally, it's the middle of winter. So? So, nobody is going to buy lemonade in this cold? Hmm, maybe I should lower the price a little. I'll subtract one-fourth, which is 25 cents. So, one dollar minus 25 cents is 75 cents. Hey, Ginger, do you want a nice cold glass of lemonade? You must be nuts. Hmm, maybe it's still too expensive. I'll subtract half of a dollar, which is 50 cents. So, one dollar minus 50 cents equals... 50 cents. Hello, Miss Prime. My lemonade is half price today. No, thank you, Tally. Hmm, I'll have to make it even cheaper. I'll subtract three fourths, which is 75 cents. One dollar minus 75 cents leaves a price of 25 cents. Boy, now I'm getting thirsty. Oh no, the lemonade is frozen. Now what? Lemonade or lemon ice pops for sale. Come and get your fresh lemon ice pops. I'll take one, please. Yeah, so Tally subtracted three fourths from the original price. If he subtracted another fourth, how much, how much would he charge? Thinking caps. Answer time. If Tally subtracted another one fourth from the original price, he would be charging zero dollars. Miss Prime tapped her desk with a ruler. Attention everyone, today we're having a test on fractions. Oh no, oh. This test will be a little different because you will give me some, this test will be a little different because you will give me the problems to solve. We will. If I say the right answer, I get a point. If I say the wrong answer and you catch me, the class gets a point. Who wants to start? Okay, Miss Prime, draw a circle and divide it into fourths. There, that's wrong because the parts of a fraction have to be equal, one point for us. Now, which is greater, one fourth or one third? One third is greater than one fourth. She's right. Give her a point. 
Now, which fraction of a candy bar would be the smallest? Two fourths or one half? Hmm, one half? That's wrong because two fourths and one half are equal. The class gets a point. In what fraction of the set of girl students am I? Well, there are three girls, so you are one third. That's right, Miss Prime. So what fraction of this circle is colored blue? Two fifths. <laughs> right again. What fraction of this shape is purple? One fifth. Nope. There are six parts, so one sixth is purple. That's the bell. The test is over. We got half the points and you got half. It's a tie. What fraction of Miss Prime students is ginger? Another thinking moment. Remember that there are five students. Answer time. Ginger is one fifth of the set of Miss Prime students. Because there are five students and she was one, so one fifth. The end.